Welcome to the Transmart Foundation Monthly Community Meeting for May 2015. As with all community meetings, the meeting is recorded for offline viewing. Our agenda for this month's call includes uh, foundation updates, uh, an update on progress towards organizing uh, the Cross Neurodegenerative Disease Datathon, an update on our recent BioIT World Activities in Boston. We'll also provide an update on the Transmart version 1.x platform, talk a bit about the annual meeting. And this month we will feature IO Informatics and the, the uh, capabilities that they potentially bring uh, to the platform and contributions that they're interested in making to the community. So we'll begin today's uh, uh, call with foundation updates. So Keith, I'll turn it over to you. Okay, uh, one second. There we go. Uh, so let me uh, first welcome everybody to the uh, to the community meeting. Our last community meeting was uh, was held in person at Deloitte. We had uh, over a hundred people there, and I want to thank everyone who came. Uh, we had a, a really nice meeting. Um, I'll give people a bit of updates uh, that are a bit redundant with that, just uh, to ensure that everyone's on the same page, given that a number of people couldn't attend that. Uh, first is, is that the uh, foundation has formally received its 501c3 approval letter from the IRS. Uh, this is retroactive to the incorporation date of the foundation, which is back in uh, uh, April of 2013. Is that right, Kevin? Yes. Yeah, 2013. Uh, so what that means is that for all of our members, et cetera, um, all of your membership fees, et cetera, are tax-deductible donations. Uh, the foundation is now eligible to apply for various um, philanthropic funding and, and other sources. And in fact, one of the first ones that we've taken advantage of is that uh, the Google Apps infrastructure provides uh, free services for nonprofits. And uh, we have uh, applied for that access uh, through Google as well. So that's uh, really good news for us and will help us be, I think, a much more effective uh, group in terms of bringing funding and other resources to bear on the Transmart platform and community. Next slide. Uh, to give you the quick uh, membership update, uh, we have three new Silver members. Uh, Dexter, a company founded by David Peruk and, and others from Sanofi, formerly from Sanofi. Um, IO Informatics, who you'll hear a bit about uh, today, and uh, Philips uh, in, uh, in the Netherlands. Uh, so we have uh, three new Silver members uh, to add to our, our uh, previous seven, <clears throat> nine gold members, um, and a number of others that uh, are members of the foundation. I'll also point out from a pipeline perspective that we have uh, about half a dozen different groups right now discussing membership with the foundation that we're moving forward, and we're seeing that pick up quite a bit. Uh, so if you have an interest in membership, please contact me directly uh, or Kevin Smith. Um, one of the key things we had uh, at our annual uh, meeting, or I should say not at the annual meeting, at our board meeting in April is the election of our uh, new members. I'll remind people that uh, when a director is elected to the board, they are elected to a two-year term. Um, our gold members uh, each can appoint a member directly to the board. Our silver members um, are put into a pool of directors to be elected to the board at a ratio of three members to one board seat. Um, and that goes up to a maximum of five seats. Um, given that, we had uh, three new silver members. That means we had a new uh, silver seat open up for election on the board. In addition, we had um, a silver member director whose term was expiring. Uh, that was Lee Hood, who was one of our founding board members. Uh, I'd like to thank Lee for his service, um, both uh, you know, in the founding of the foundation uh, and for the first two years of the foundation's uh, existence. Uh, Jim Burns is our other silver director. He is uh, he'll be uh, his term runs until 2016. Uh, the two new elected silver directors were Kays Van Bako from the Hive, um, and uh, we welcome Kays to the board. His term will be until 2017, and then uh, Bob Stanley from IO Informatics was elected as well, and his term also runs until 2017. I'll just express the caveat that these terms uh, run as long as the companies are um, in good standing at the member level uh, that the directors were elected at. Um, so uh, this brings our board um, up to, uh, what is it, 13 now, Kevin? Yes. We have uh, a number of members, and what you can see is that one of the things that we've implemented over the past year 
is a staggering of our board terms so that approximately half of the board's uh, director positions expire every year uh, and we re-elect those. This gives us consistency amongst the, the membership and uh, the leadership of the, uh, of the foundation. Um, uh, Brett Davis um, continues on as the chair of our finance committee. Uh, Matteo Di Tommaso was elected as an at-large director. Um, he had left. He's left Pfizer, um, and as the you know the management wanted to keep the continuity of his role in, in the governance committee and others, he was elected to an at-large position, and uh, continues to serve as the chair of our governance and nominations committee. And uh, Gil Oman uh, continues to serve as our chairman of the board. Uh, so uh, this is our board as we go forward for the next year. Next slide. Uh, just to remind you of the current foundation staffing, um, the officers are uh, Kevin, myself, and Ashley George. The management team is completed by Brian Athey as our CSO, E.K. Go as our CTO, Michael Braxton Thaler uh, heading up the marketplace, Rudy running marketing, and Steve Johnson uh, as VP of Finance. Um, on our fellow side, um, we have Terry Weymouth as our code fellow from University of Michigan working with the, the code committee. Uh, Jamie Katicia is working with us um, on our copyright project, on the copyrights and licensing for the platform. Uh, and then we have uh, two additions uh, to report. Peter Rice is joining us, um, effective uh, June 1, as the content fellow. And uh, Jay Farron has joined us uh, as our QA release architect, um, working with us on the quality initiative as we implement that for version 1.2 and for version 1.3 and, and on. So these are two new contributors to the foundation. Uh, you should expect to see more changes as we go along in the future. Uh, to outline some of the strategic initiatives that we have running, I think everyone's familiar with what we're doing in, in our work and efforts to develop a high quality code base. Uh, Jay Farron has been working with Terry, with Peter, with other members of the community. He's certainly interviewed many different groups and will continue to, uh, to architect a, a quality initiative that we hope to implement on version 1.2 and all later code releases. This in, includes re-architecting some of our uh, issue reporting, some of our um, bug fixing process, patch releases, testing, and more. Um, so uh, the goal there is to, is to really focus effort on improving the overall quality and capability of the code base. Uh, we have a lot of effort focused on improving the current code base, which I would call uh, evolutionary development. Uh, we right now are collecting requirements for a version 1.3 development cycle. Um, we hope to have those requirements uh, finalized this month and to be able to begin a development process in June. Um, if you have uh, various um, requirements or other suggestions you'd like to make, uh, you should refer these either to uh, Jay Bergeron from the Code Committee or Sherry Sal from the uh, Community Committee. Uh, as they are the two uh, key people leading up the, uh, the collection of these requirements. Uh, we also have work developing uh, towards the uh, what we will call a commercial quality version 2 platform. We think of this as a, a revolutionary development. Uh, we've had the architecture working group go through and, and help us with an initial thinking about a developer architecture. Uh, we've now engaged the community committee in developing sets of requirements and, and other capabilities that we need here. Two key themes that have come through are support for full genome variants. Um, this is an effort that is being led uh, quite nicely by uh, Genomics England and, and other, uh, other people around. And um, we also are working uh, to support wearable sensors. And this is a key area of interest of the Michael J. Fox Foundation and a number of others. Uh, MJFF, for example, is running a clinical trial this summer using uh, Android devices with Pebble watches to collect um, continuous data from Parkinson's patients. Uh, we're working to initiate a full requirement specification uh, through the community committee. Um, and as I mentioned, the key drivers there are Genomics England and Michael J. Fox. And finally, uh, we're working to, to really focus on keeping the foundation in the center of the community to be more effective in facilitating efforts through our three C committees uh, by being cooperative uh, with all of our partners and vendors a uh, key aspect of this is kicking off the marketplace initiative uh, that's uh, continuing to roll out and uh, continuing our outreach and strategic market initiatives uh, to really grow the name, the content, the footprint of the, uh, the Transmart platform and the Transmart community. Overall, I think we're being quite successful. Uh, I'll just add a, another key piece to this is that uh, one of the things we focused on in, in this phase of our development 
has been stabilizing the operations and financial status of the of the foundation. And uh, uh, I was reported to the board of directors last month. Uh, we now are in a position where we have a recurring revenue base for our membership program, and we have uh, cash uh, that will fund us for uh, 12 months, and we'll keep that kind of ongoing uh, funding base. So I think we're in a, a good financial state as well as a community. Next slide. Um, I'll give you a quick update on the datathon, and then I'll uh, turn the, the presentation back to Kevin. Um, we've been working very closely with uh, the Michael J. Fox Foundation and with Ken Kubota specifically to develop the uh, cross neurodegenerative disease datathon. This is a datathon focused on uh, looking at data sets across Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease in particular, but others um, in general. Um, one of the key issues here is ensuring that we can get open access to data. And one of the things that we're finding is that open access to data is not a well-defined term. This is an area for the foundation that I think we need to be very active in, is helping to define what open means uh, and to ensure that open data is truly open and can be shared and used very effectively within the Transmart community and, and other communities as well. Um, in order to do this, we found that uh, the, the previous plan we had with our datathon was not going to be approved. Um, and to do to actually carry out the datathon, we've worked with uh, with the, the group at Loney, the Laboratory of Neuro, Neuroimaging at USC. And uh, what we've come up with is a plan to put Transmart onto the Loney servers to enable the sharing of uh, the various data sets um, engaged in this with uh, uh, with our community and with the datathon. So this is working forward. Uh, Terry Weymouth and the team at, at University of Michigan and the foundation have been working closely with the Loney team. We have Transmart up and installed on the Loney cloud servers. Uh, the University of Luxembourg group under Venkata Sagatapam have loaded their data on, on this, and we're now uh, waiting to get the, uh, the data from ADME, PPMI, LERC2, and BioFine loaded. When we have those set, we'll do our functional testing and our load testing uh, and be ready to go. Um, we have sent out a doodle poll to reschedule the datathon. Uh, there are four dates that have been sent out there. If you've received this poll and you haven't yet uh, participated, uh, please do so. Uh, I'll just point out that right now it looks like the week of June 23 to 25 is the most favorable date. Uh, but you know, get your vote in on, on the doodle poll. Uh, we're quite excited about getting this going. Um, this is something that we we think is going to be a, an ongoing activity for the foundation as we go forward. And uh, this first datathon is going to be a really uh, great learning experience and uh, a great research experience as well. So I'd like to encourage those of you who have an interest to let us know. We're keeping the, uh, uh, the participation level here at between 20 and 25 participants just to, uh, to be able to manage the process and the load on the platforms. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, please let me know later and uh, we can address those. Kevin, I think that's the end of my piece. Great. Yes. Thank you, Keith. Uh, next, we'll turn to um, Rudy Potenzon to give us an update on the many activities that occurred last month at BioIT World, and uh, Rudy will also make a brief update on uh, the training program. Rudy? Thanks, Kevin. Um, boy, what can I say about this show? I mean, other than wow, uh, the, the foundation was there uh, in force, uh, the, the, most of the management team was there. Um, and I had a lot of activities which I went through very quickly. But uh, the, the highlight certainly was, uh, for me at least, that we, we actually won, you know, foundation related activities won three awards um, from the judges uh, uh, from CHI uh, and as they looked at, you know, our different offerings. So, uh, first of all, uh, Michael J. Fox Foundation won the Best Practice Award for their work on implementing uh, the, the data from the, the, their Parkinson's disease research program into the foundation platform, uh, and the, the judges, um, again, awarded them a Best Practice Award, uh, which was very exciting for them, I know, and certainly for us uh, to see that recognition. Uh, next slide. Um, the foundation platform itself. Um, won the Best in Show Award in the Informatics and uh, Tools and Data Division. Uh, and here we see uh, Ken from, the, uh, from uh, Michael J. Fox and Keith uh, holding the awards uh, that we received there. Uh, and um, this was a case where the, you know, the, the award uh, was uh, very, very fulfilling for us to see 
uh, as we were able to accept it. Um, and then the, finally, the third, next slide, um, uh, the, uh, the Hive, uh, working with CTMM, had presented a poster on some of the, the excellent work that they're doing. Uh, and here we see um, that uh, award receiving the award for best uh, poster. So, you know, this is absolutely a recognition of uh, the good work that uh, across the community that we've been doing with the platform. Uh, it shows the, the platform itself being recognized, and it shows several of the projects, you know, that are underway. Uh, being seen as leaders uh, in, in the area. And so, you know, I think it's, it's a really, you know, very nice thing to, to get the, the uh, recognition. Um, but that was not all what, what we did there. Next slide. Oops. Um, we hey, did Rudy? do that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, can you just mention the write-ups that were done on this too? I think there's a couple of really great oh, articles. that's right. There, there, there are a couple of articles written um, on these. And so, the Michael J. Fox project was written up in BioIT World, a very nice long article about, um, you know, why they were doing it, what they're trying to accomplish, uh, and there are links on the website um, to the article. It was in BioIT World about a week ago. Um, we were also covered in um, uh, uh, another um, uh, newsletter on um, uh, uh, Health records, uh, electronic health records uh, newsletter, uh, where um, an in-depth interview with Keith on the foundation uh, was done and, and describing kind of how we got here. And one of the, the takeaway messages in that article, which was really exciting, was says that you know Transmark Foundation really is you know the example of a successful foundation, you know, and how you should do it. And then finally, uh, CD News covered the, some of the data issues and items, and, and I, we were, I was interviewed for that article. So all three of these are referenced on the website in the BioAT World uh, section, and you can see the, that information there. <clears throat> um, we also had an advanced training course. It was our, our first uh, uh, effort to put this together, uh, thanks to the efforts of Rancho Biosciences um, put together an advanced training course, about, about 10 people attended, and we went into some of the, a little more in-depth, uh, some of the, the capabilities of the system, and we're packaging this to, course to be offered uh, on a regular basis uh, later in the year. We did have our board meeting uh, at the beginning of the, uh, early in the show. Um, the three C committees had uh, sessions uh, where the, the working groups uh, were able to discuss and, and plot out the work for the coming fiscal year. Um, in the evening, uh, Wednesday evening, we had a, a wonderful community meeting. Uh, about 100 people showed up again uh, at the, the Converge Health by Deloitte offices, um, and uh, we, we listened to presentations, a uh, number of presentations on uh, both uh, the activities of the three seat committees, uh, a very uh, a good session on content run by Julie Bryant, uh, and uh, it was really, uh, again, another excellent exchange between uh, members, um, you know, the, uh, the community uh, giving up an evening in Boston to, uh, to sit with us and uh, talk about the foundation. Uh, we had a, a booth at the show. We had uh, well over 50 people coming and asking and registering for more information, uh, And but if anybody was there, uh, the booth was, was never hardly empty. We had just constant people coming through. Uh, we also had a presentation on the platform uh, that Keith gave, the last talk of the last day in the last session, uh, and while the session started pretty lightly attended, by the end of the, the by, by, as Keith uh, hit the podium, the room basically filled up with a good 50 people coming just for the purpose of hearing about Transmart. So, and again, you know, the press coverage, you know, the interviews uh, have been out there. So on the website, all this stuff is, is uh, detailed in more, you know, more detail. Uh, we have recordings of the community meeting and the slide decks that we used are all posted up there. So uh, please go to the website there. We keep that, try to keep it up to date. There's a lot of stuff out there that uh, is really interesting, but, um, you know, we've, we've put a lot of coverage. So uh, this was a phenomenal show. You know, you, you get to do the shows like this you know, rarely to have this level of success kind of at every single thing that we, we tried to put together here. And um, it was very rewarding, I think, and, and something that really is a testament to the hard work that everybody's doing uh, on the foundation. So that's what I have for BioT World. Um, one more slide I'm going to just mention. Um, we are doing training now. Uh, so we offer a free new user training every month. Uh, it's about a 90 minutes, about an hour presentation, and 30 minutes for questions. 
um, that right now the training is being contributed by Rancho Bioscience and Thomson Reuters, uh, although other vendors will, will probably be also um, stepping in here to, to help us out. Uh, we've held four sessions so far, and you can see the attendance has been basically around 20 people, uh, although we had a, a peak in, in March, I think, uh, before BioT World, a lot of people were interested. But uh, this year we've trained up over 100 new users for the, for the system. Um, we do a, a questionnaire at this thing, and um, you know, at least 75% of the people attending have really never used or heard much about the system before this. So these are people being driven, you know, to come and learn more about Transmart, and hopefully, will be, you know, using it uh, in their job, in their research. Um, so that's what I have. Um, again, if you're interested, the, the, the trainings take place at uh, the last Monday of each month. Uh, and uh, you can go to the website and register for uh, the, the training sessions. That's it. Back to you, Kevin. Thanks, Rudy. So before uh, we turn things over to IO Informatics, I'm going to do a brief update on uh, uh, version 1.x activities and uh, also provide a brief update on our planning for the annual meeting uh, later this year. So turning to um, version 1.2, I believe everybody is aware that the current release is version 1.2.4. Uh, this version was released earlier this year. There remains a number of bugs that have been reported uh, in the foundation's uh, JIRA environment. We have a team led by Terry Weymouth and, and uh, Peter Rice that are triaging these bugs uh, that are reported in JIRA. Currently, the, uh, the Hive and Imperial College of London are the major contributors towards fixing those bugs. As we saw last year with the initial release of version 1.2, um, we'll be able to address these if we get broader community uh, involvement. So um, while we greatly appreciate the work that the Hive and Imperial College are, are doing towards fixing uh, the remaining bugs that have been reported to date, around version 1.2, we would certainly benefit from broader community involvement. So um, if, if you're available or your groups are available, uh, please reach out to Terry and, and, and Peter to, to get involved. Towards that end, uh, the next release of version 1.2 will be 1.2.5. Uh, we are currently targeting uh, the release date of that for some time in August, and again, uh, the actual release date will be dependent upon uh, community participation, so please get involved. Version 1.3, as many are aware, um, and Keith alluded to during uh, the, his uh, uh, updates around foundation activities, uh, we have Jay Bergeron and Sherry Cow representing the Code and Community Committees coalescing requirements. Currently, this involves um, um, needs or unaddressed needs that are represented across ETRIX and IMI more generally, the CTMM Trait Project, Genomics England, and a number of pharmaceutical organizations that include Pfizer, Sanofi, AbbVie, and, and BI. We're also looking with version 1.3 to reintroduce tighter integration of I2B2 and Transmart to be able to take advantage of some of the work that Paul Aviak at Harvard uh, is doing uh, around the platform. And then, of course, there are requirements that, that others are making known that Jay and, and Sherry are coalescing. So this, this activity is very act active at the moment, and we hope to have these coalesced requirements in the next week or two. Complementing that um, is funding to move forward with the version 1.3. So as we saw with version 1.2, there will be a prioritization process. And right now, we are working uh, with the community um, around funding for uh, version 1.3. And we anticipate at this time that when we look across the community, will be able to pull together somewhere in the order of three to five hundred thousand dollars to support this development activity. And then as Keith mentioned, with the recent designation of 501c3 status, we will also be looking to uh, potential um, donors, the, the philanthropy community, to, to match um, the, the funding that will come from the 
uh, community. And the goal then will be as the, the requirements are coalesced, as funding is put in place, that the actual development will be coordinated by the foundation and that uh, the, the development as has occurred in, in prior versions of, of uh, the platform will be done by uh, various uh, groups uh, from across the community. So uh, turning then to the annual meeting, the brief update there is, as we've indicated before, the meeting will be held in October, specifically October 19 through 21. Uh, the CTMM trade initiative um, has graciously offered to host uh, this year's annual meeting, and the venue will be the National Cancer Institute of the Netherlands uh, in, in Amsterdam. So with past meetings, um, the, the uh, sessions will focus on science. Uh, there will be technical sessions as well as a hackathon. We will also be coordinating additional training. Uh, we will hold an awards program as we did uh, this past year during the 2014 annual meeting. And then uh, we will also build upon the success of, of the poster session by actually holding a poster competition. So, so details still to be worked out, stay tuned. Our priority at the moment is to confirm plenary and keynote speakers, and we hope to be able to share um, uh, details of, of who will be some of our high profile speakers uh, sometime uh, in June, certainly by the time of the June community meeting. So with that, um, I would like to introduce Bob Stanley at Ioinformatics. Uh, Ioinformatics and, and the team have graciously offered to uh, provide uh, some, some information on Ioinformatics and some of their thinking about how they would uh, like to uh, engage with the community. So uh, Bob, welcome, I'll turn it over to you. And if you have slides, um, I'd be more than happy to make you presenter. Sounds great. Can you guys hear me? Yes, we can. Fantastic. Um, well, thanks, everybody. And um, just on behalf of IO Informatics, I want to thank uh, Transmart for inviting us to present today. And you should be able to see my slides. It says Intro to IO Informatics. Yes. Fantastic. All right. Um, what I thought I would do, having uh, chatted briefly with Kevin about your goals for the meeting, is just give a brief high-level introduction to, to Ioinformatics and what we do, and then focus on um, some of the ways that we can um, contribute to more effective use of Transmart. So I think I'll just jump right in. Actually, before I get into the meat of slides, I'll, uh, I just kind of want to remind us why uh, why we're here. I'm thinking in particular of a very close friend of mine, a fine musician who had had a heart transplant and um, like many recipients of transplants he just took such joy in life. Uh, my friend Jeff Thomas was a great um, light in the lives of everyone who knew him. He used to come over to my place and play music and would drive about an hour and spend the night and we'd get a little trio together and practice and he'd leave in the morning one uh, one Friday morning when he was leaving to go home, he just said he wasn't feeling that great and maybe had a cold and needed to go home and rest. And um, he made it home, and by the before he uh, had a chance to talk with anyone, he went into a massive uh, rejection and uh, had heart failure and went into a coma and never came out. And of course, that was a real blow to, to me and his family and friends. And I'm confident if there had been a sensitive biomarker-based um, uh, diagnostic that could have used a uh, blood or urine um, to to tell whether or not he was at risk of, of heart failure that would have been detected and we're close enough to Stanford out here in Berkeley California I think he probably could have been saved so I just want to express my appreciation to Transmart researchers who are doing that sort of work and in that spirit um, talk about what Ioinformatics is up to. We've been around for um, some time. Uh, we've actually had a team uh, who got together as early as 99 and um, were founded at Ioinformatics in 2003, focusing on solving tough integration uh, challenges, getting data clean and connected for healthcare life science. We've got a 
fantastic uh, science advisory board, um, a number of working groups, and of course we do a lot with um, uh, groups like Pistoia Alliance and W3C, and, and now we're excited to be a part of Transmart. So Ioinformatics uh, customers have a strong translational research focus. You can see here, you know, ranging from pharma, R&D, safety science, uh, etc., all the way out to um, uh, customers who have uh, research clinics and hospitals, um, as well as groups like uh, FDA. For uh, Transmart users who work with patient data or sensitive data, um, when I get a chance to talk about what we do, if we have an opportunity to work with you, it's important to know that we do have a lot of uh, HIPAA certified uh, team members, so we're quite familiar working with um, patient data. What do we do? Well, Ioinformatics connects the dots essentially across um, what may be quite complex and maybe uh, even variable um, data resources. Uh, there can be a lot of issues with nomenclature, not only just different uses of terms, but even a lot of errors in data that you need to integrate into your system. Uh, we can really help connect those dots and get your data um, connected in a way that will feed Transmart. You know, the goals here are just reducing the time and cost to getting your data integrated and into your system, also reducing time and cost to add new data, um, we use a semantic uh, layer, that's that formal uh, World Wide Web Consortium standard. If folks want to ask more about that, we'd be happy to follow up with more detail about semantic technologies. I think a lot of people in this group are probably aware of those. Um, we use the semantic uh, software and methods as an integration layer. We can apply inference and ontologies to really, um, uh, and visualization, network-based visualization, to really draw the connections between data you need to get together, and then we can practically push a button and spit that out in the, um, whether it's the Excel spreadsheet format that Transmart likes, or if you have a more automated process, uh, we can just uh, put data directly into the database. Quick look at software and services that Ioinformatics provides. Um, on the left, you see a lot of the work we do. Oh, actually, on the far left, I'll just mention um, people using Transmart and Ioinformatics will be in good company. We're also thrilled to have won um, both uh, Best in Show Award for our software as well as Best Practices for work we've done with a few customers in um, the biomarker discovery and data integration spaces, so I'm just happy to report that. Um, we do provide data curation and integration services. <clears throat> we use our own software tools as well as other products like NIME or Pipeline Pilot um, to uh, construct a, um, a data curation and integration process for you. And um, we'll look a little bit at our, our Knowledge Explorer software today, which is the, the tool that we use to do the, um, to do the data modeling. on the upper right uh, of our Knowledge Explorer software. It gives you nice uh, network visualization of the data that we put into the system. Um, however, it's really uh, designed as a, as a tool for data scientists to use to um, construct an integrated resource. So you can kind of dump two or three different data sources into the system and and you could sort of say shake the data or basically start running Sparkle queries or semantic queries on, on data, and this will surface uh, content from each of the different resources you're interested in connecting and allow you to draw those connections between you know, something that may be called a gene in one data set and a, a GID in the other or something like that. You, know, you can get all of those things connected and normalized. And then having done that, um, will be the, the, the product creates mappers that allows you to deliver integrated data back out to your applications. There's a lot more we could talk about here. We're happy to follow up with demos and, and that sort of thing, but I think this is just going to be a short chat today, so it's a little introduction. Here's uh, coming up a little bit closer to uh, what the Knowledge Explorer does. We apply ontologies. 
we apply this visualization metaphor you see here on the left. We can take data from different sources, kind of see what connections come up out of the data naturally, and then we'll either map that to um, a structure like the Transmart uh, data structure that you may need. A comp we'll create essentially a common ontology here, and once you've done that, uh, you can run all kinds of queries on the data and, um, and put it out in whatever form you need. Sometimes you may also want to apply thesauri and, and controlled vocabularies to your, to your integration. I'll also just mention um, there was some talk about the developer community around Transmart. We've been working with Transmart at Bioinformatics uh, for a little while. One of the things we learned early on was that the existing installation was not so easy or efficient, so we constructed a, a Docker container, and um, you can see the, the link here, and we can send this to anyone who'd like to ask afterwards. But the, the uh, this is a nice, clean, well uh, well formed Docker container. It really makes the installation much easier, and also gives you some flexibility in terms of some choices you may want to make in the back end. Just to talk a little bit about how we actually do things at Bioinformatics, I'd mentioned how we apply our uh, Knowledge Explorer to bringing in different data and getting it connected. So you may have some tabular data, a TSV file, this could be an Excel spreadsheet. You might have a, an, another semantic data resource. A lot of those uh, linked open data resources, which may be more or less open, but th many of them are available um, in semantic format. So you might have some semantic data. You may have uh, some data coming out of a relational database. We essentially point our tool, or you could point our tool to those data sources, get a, uh, a visual network that reflects the underlying data, and then you can start to uh, apply uh, mapping and ontologies to get a nice integrated resource with the mappers that are relevant to each, each data source as uh, an output of this process. Once you've done that, um, we get a nice uh, unified uh, data layer, and you can either just simply run a query on um, that integrated data and put that out kind of manually into the structure that you need for Transmart, or what we see more often with our customers is there may be new data coming in from time to time, maybe every day, uh, maybe quite often, or you know, weekly, monthly, you get new data coming in, so we'll construct a pipeline um, this can use uh, NIME or Pipeline Pilot or some other pipelining tool. Um, and then um, from that pipeline, we, we use this integrated uh, content as the, as the resource, and then we put that back out in the Transmart uh, data structure. So this really reduces the time and effort uh, to get data, I'll say clean and connected, and structured in a way that it's consumable by Transmart and can construct an automated pipeline that keeps that, uh, that system current. So this, I, th I think, is the real take home, uh, hopefully today, for Transmart users, is uh, where IOinformatics can contribute is, is helping you with that integration and curation process to get the data into your system using um, software, particularly semantic software, to really reduce the time and cost to get that done. About it. We've got a, a, a lot of nice customer success stories. Again, would be happy to go into a lot more detail on this sort of thing in other uh, meetings if, if folks are interested. Recap, um, bioinformatics. Uh, we are a real leader with unique uh, and award-winning software in the data curation and integration space. We help you get your data linked. Um, we can provide integrated searching and reporting, for example, uh, through our own web query or through your Transmart application. And our, our goal in this discussion is to um, help Transmart users overcome bottlenecks to getting data into the system. That's something that I, we've actually heard uh, about from our own customers who happen to be Transmart users. You know, we can, can we help you with this? And uh, this is where... I started chatting with uh, Brian Athey and Keith and Kevin and the uh, leaders of Transmart a, a while back and uh, sort of led us into developing a relationship. 
hope it was useful. Any any questions? Great. Um, Bob, uh, thanks for that presentation. Um, I know that uh, a, a couple of questions have come up uh, in, the, in the chat window. Um, thank you for uh, making time to present IOINFORMATICS, its capabilities, and the way uh, your organization potentially fits into and is part of the broader Transmart community. So what I'll do is um, I'll go ahead and take back um, um, the, the uh, presenter and um, we'll go ahead and open things up for uh, questions um, more, more generally. So um, if, if uh, for those on the call, if you do have um, uh, questions, uh, please uh, either raise your hand or type them into the chat window. I'm going to unmute Gil Omen because he's raised uh, a couple of questions. Gil, I hope you're there. Uh, I think you had uh, typed in a couple of questions or comments around uh, version one dot or version 2.0, but also around uh, the offering that IOINFORMATICS is making with respect to Docker. So, Gil, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Bob, that was a tremendous presentation. We thank you for your participation. Also your role now as an elected member of the board of the foundation. Uh, my question is, is a simple one. Uh, you mentioned the uh, valuable introduction of Docker as a front end for Transmart. So I want to know if you're um, making that available in Transmart or is it available open source or would a user have to uh, negotiate a contract to gain access to it? That is available. It's available as an open source tool. Um, it's on the Docker um, um, site, and I'll tell you what I'll do. Just right now, I'll go ahead and post a, uh, a link in chat. How's that sound? And, and you can follow up with me by email if you'd like, and uh, we'll be glad to help uh, make that happen for, for folks who, who need us. Need, need to. Cool. There you go. Oh, wait. Okay, and my, that's very, very helpful. Thank you. Yep. Uh, my earlier question was related to the uh, statement that we're working with Genome England on uh, genomic variants and some other parameters for development toward virgin, uh, version 2. I was just um, last week at the uh, Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute, European Bioinformatics Institute, for a meeting about the data sources and the annotation strategies of the multiple different uh, groups. Uh, all through Europe and the U.S. on uh, genomic and proteomic and metabolomic annotation. And a special emphasis on proteomics drew me there. In any case, I was uh, suggesting that uh, there is a tool from one of our uh, participating Transmart members, namely Institute for Systems Biology, called Caviar. It's a database of well-annotated gene variants, genome, genomic variants developed by Gustavo Glusman, who's been a participant occasionally on these calls. And I highly recommend it to you. It's K-A-V-I-A-R, Caviar. Great. Fantastic. Um, for that lead, and I'll, I'll, I'll mention that, um, yeah, we, we had known uh, Gustavo, and I'll also uh, say if folks are interested in um, other ideas in that nomenclature and ontology space, Ioinformatics does a lot of work with Stanford's National Center for Biomedical Ontologies, and um, we'd be quite happy to chat with anyone who wants to uh, try to advance, uh, you know, their um, strategy for um, whether it's for you know, you know URIs, which is a common uh, resource indicator, or uh, or nomenclature. We that's an area that we we do a lot of work. So thanks for that lead. Yeah, we share that connection with uh, Mark Mewson's National Center for yeah. Biological Ontologies. It has parallel to our University of Michigan National Center on Integrative Biomedical Informatics, NCIBI. And in fact, we were cross participants in the uh, two centers. So, good point. Great. Great. So, I've also, uh, Gustavo, I've also unmuted you uh, since uh, Gil brought up uh, the caviar tool. I just wanted to give you an opportunity to make any additional comments or detailed clarification if, if interested.
Okay. Um, so, so Gustavo j just uh, replied back that he's not in a location where, where he's able to talk without a lot of background noise. So, so um, if, if uh, you have interest in um, uh, caviar, uh, please feel free to reach out to Gustavo directly. Um, you can find his contact information um, on the ISB uh, website. Um, and so uh, Gustavo has also shared a, a link, uh, w which we'll uh, make sure to get out to, to those on this call um, later today. So uh, any other questions or comments that, that people are interested in making, either please type those into the chat window or, or raise your hand. Um, if not, we'll go ahead and uh, close out uh, today's meeting. So it does not look like uh, there, there are any other additional comments or questions. So Keith, I'd like to uh, turn things over to you to, to close out our call today. Thanks, Kevin, <clears throat> and thanks, Bob. I, I think it's uh, it's great to have some new members uh, joining the, the foundation and to have them come on board and and provide some insights into how they're adding to the capabilities of the community. So I want to thank Bob for that. Uh, that's terrific, and, and also as Gil pointed out, thank him, uh, you know, for joining the board and and working with us to, to really provide some leadership for the direction of the foundation. Uh, one of the key things that's important as we go forward is is building and growing the membership of the foundation. As I mentioned, we have a number of groups that are um, in the process of of applying for membership, and I, I want to encourage those groups to to continue with the process. And then if other people know groups that would be interested in becoming members of the foundation. You know, please let let us know. You know, me directly or, or Kevin Smith, and, and we'll follow up with people. Uh, I think it was a great uh, BioIT World Show. I think it was very energizing for all of us. Um, I want to keep that energy growing as we continue to move forward on what we're doing with the version 1.3 project, as we work forward on the version 2 project, and as we put together the uh, the agenda for the annual meeting coming up in October uh, in Amsterdam. So I encourage people to get involved, get engaged, and uh, until next month, uh, I hope you all have a great month and, uh, and keep working towards the success of the foundation and the community. Thanks. Fantastic. Thanks, everyone. Thank you all.